we've got to talk about the story on the front page of the Times newspaper today um, involving, again, one of those MPs most of us have never heard of. You know, this guy called Mark Menzies. He's, well, until uh, last night, was the Tory MP for uh, Fylde in Lancashire, also a government trade envoy. Um, he had been heard of before when he was accused of paying for sex from a male escort back in 2014. Um, uh, but this time round, these are the most extraordinary allegations. Um, he's under investigation over allegations that he misused campaign funds. We're looking at £14,000 in total he's believed to have misused, um, given by donors to use on a Tory campaign activities, but had been transferred to his personal bank account and used for his private medical expenses. We don't know what those uh, medical expenses were exactly, but the crucial, really extraordinary uh, thing that's come out is that he made a late-night phone call, 3.15 in the morning in December, to one of his aides, um, his former campaign manager, 78-year-old woman, saying he'd been locked up by, in his words, she claims, bad people who were demanding he pay £5,000, saying he needed the money as a matter of, she claims he said, of life and death. Um, eventually, his office manager took money from her own personal bank account. The fee for getting him out of this locked flat uh, was £5,000, but became, in the morning, £6,500. Um, office manager got the money out of her personal uh, bank account, I think I think cashed in an ISA or something in the morning and the bank's open, um, was then subsequently reimbursed from campaign funds which had been raised from donors. Um, now, not entirely sure that's what people think they're going to be donating or getting the money spent on when they, when they donate to a political party. The allegation here is also that the Conservative Party knew about this as early as January and have failed to act until the Times newspaper contacted them yesterday and now he's been suspended from the party. He, it must be said, has denied all of the allegations. Claire, <laughs> what on earth is going on in the House of Commons that these sort of things can allegedly be happening? Well, this one, I think, has got sort of the, the hint of Alan Partridge around it. Hasn't it? The phone call at 3.15 in the morning to a 78-year-old volunteer of the party waking her up, demanding money uh, because of bad people. Bad now, people. if you were locked in a flat and being held by bad people, would your first phone call not be to the police? at that point, not a 78-year-old lady um, asking for money. So I, I, I'm not sure... Although I'm not sure I'd bother with the police. I, I'm, I'm not sure they'd, well, end, they'd end up turning up anyway. But you'll be all right. I have to say, I, we did think this morning, like, what, you know, what, what, what questions should we put out to our audience today? And one of the suggestions, I was very tempted to go with this, <laughs> was if you were locked in a flat <laughs> by bad people and it was three in the morning, who would you call? Exactly. I mean, if you want to get in touch on that, please do, because I would love to know. But who is your phone a friend, isn't it? It is, it is. And who would answer as well, I think, has to and be And who do you know who's got a spare five grand in their current account? Well, that went up to six and a half thousand. And how do you even get five in the middle of the night? You can't get... Even if you had that money, you can't get that out of the, you know, the the the, the, even, bomb in the wall. Even with uh, internet banking, it still wouldn't go through immediately, especially at that time in the morning. So I'm not sure what he thought he was going to achieve. And then the reimbursing through party funds, the sort of yeah. misappropriation of those uh, donors. Yeah. Pieces well, yeah, this is the thing. Is... It's not illegal to pay bad people to allow you out of flat. They're the ones, if they yeah. weren't like a flat, who've committed an offence if this has happened. Um, but it is, it is uh, not just a, a party issue, it is also a, a police matter if yeah. you are misappropriating campaign funds. It is alleged that, you know, on a number of occasions, uh, sums were paid to him um, and were not paid back. Um, apparently, you know, he was concerned he was going to be blackmailed again um, after he got, he got out of this flat. Um, and the following day, in another call, he said that he, this MP, it is claimed, said he needed another £35,000 for medical bills, told there was no more money in the campaign fund's bank account. He said, oh, we'll raise some more. Um, again, he is denied everything, I must make that clear. But um, there seems to have been just a, a view, it would appear from the allegations, that, that he thought that campaign funds, it is claimed, were just kind of for his personal expenses. Well, that's right. And people donate to, to local parties to help with the campaign. They want to have literature out there, posters, pay for postage, all of those kind of things. It's not for personal medical expenses or for paying off of bad people. <laughs> but it does beg the question, what has the um, CCHQ done about this yeah. in the three months? It appears to be very, very little. Yeah, and it's only when the but time also, brings another it Another Tory MP to lose the whip. Now, OK, yeah. so we know that, look, there is, if you actually go through all the MPs, you'll find, you know, Labour MPs and Lib Dem MPs and any other party, if they had enough people, there would be enough of, of, yeah. of, 
I'm not saying he is, but enough wrong ones who have been proven. I mean, there's already a, uh, a by-election in the next door Blackpool constituency, That's isn't right. there? From yeah. another MP, again, you called out in a sting operation. You can't be caught out in these things if you don't do them. Um, I mean, do we have a problem? I mean, I've genuinely been at a view. You know, we've been around MPs a long time. But the average MP is actually quite a good person. I, I genuinely, yeah. of all parties, they're actually quite good people who want to do want to do good. Um, I know it's an unpopular view, but that I worked in the House of Commons for you know well over a decade, and, and that was my general impression. But there are definitely some wrong uns, and politics does seem to attract a lot of wrong uns. It does. I think the kind of people that go into politics are risk takers. If you look yeah. at the very nature of being elected, you have to stand up and you have to sell yourself. You have to beat everybody else to get in. And it's a very risky job because you could only be there for a year, five years, yeah. depending on how long a parliament's going to last. You can lose your job at any moment. So it appeals to those with that kind of mentality. And I think also those who want to have some control. Yeah. Because they are given that. They are not... They don't have a boss, as, it, as most people would recognise it. Yes, they have the party whips, but essentially they are their own boss. Yeah. So they're not really held to account other than by the public in a public vote or, every yeah. four or five years. Or, or, or bad people in a flat at three in the morning, yes. apparently. I mean, yeah, honestly, do get in touch. Who would you call? Who would be your phone or friend in such a scenario? Do get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Um, it's just an extraordinary story. We shall see how this develops. But again, it's just another sort of... Awkward morning. Every single day, every single week, they have a grid, don't they, for the government's yeah. uh, activity. What they, you know, it's going to be. We're going to talk about health today. We're going to talk about education on this day. It's going to be Rwanda and this, you know, big victory on this day. And whatever it is, the Rishi Sunak and his team at Number Ten plan, it is always scuppered. It is, and you feel for those poor ministers out on the media round who are going to talk about uh, inflation or defence suddenly have to do yeah. with one of their colleagues. Mr. Yeah, grand chaps that take a law for lots of questions. And again, yeah. rather rather important things, small matter. I think, as he pointed yeah. out to one interview this morning, small matter of uh, of, of actually some major conflicts uh, going Absolutely. on in the world we might want to talk about as well. That said, she just spent ten minutes talking about that, but it is an extraordinary story.